the group the loop. Uh, this will be like a full tutorial. Um, I don't know what happened in, on the previous one. It, the stream wouldn't load, so I had to reset it. Uh, anyway, can you let me know if you can hear me? Can you let me know if you can hear me okay and we can sort of just uh, crack? Okay, I've no idea. I'll try again. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the sound test stream. Today, we're going to do a group the loop tutorial. If it buffers again, folks, um, I'll I'll um, not do it. Uh, I'll just I'll do it tomorrow or something. Um, okay, so uh, let me know. Uh, well, I'm sure you'll let me know if it buffers again. But uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, as long as you can hear me okay, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll crack on as best we can, um, and uh, which is very strange because, uh, yeah, who knows? Anyway, uh, we'll crack on. So at the moment, this is running inside of AUM as an interrap audio, okay, because it's not an AUV3, but we can record our AUVs, AUV3s in via interrap audio, which is fine. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and do. We're also going to do hardware, and I'm also going to tell you how Group the Loop works. Okay, so first of all, what we want to do is go to Group the Loop here, and you see where it says Input here. This is important. Tap Input, and it'll open up various inputs. Now, I've got at the moment Input 3 and 4, and that is, a, that is the synth that I had running last night. So this is the Modi X. And if you notice at the top, there's a, an input signal. So I, I, everything is plugged into the audio fuse. So your audio interface will do fine. So this way you can record your hardware and your and your AUV3s or interrupt audio into whatever you like. Dead easy. So I'm going to scroll down here where it's on input source and I'm going to find AUM. And there it is, Comatica AUM. And I'm going to choose Comatica AUM port 1. Now, we can have up to eight ports, okay? But we're going to choose port 1 because that's just the easiest thing to do. And now, we are actually... Right, you, you, the only reason you're hearing that is because I'm direct monitoring, okay? If I stop direct monitoring, you won't hear it. This is not coming... That piano is not coming through this. OK, the only thing that is now going to be coming through this is anything that we put into port one on AUM. And if we monitor it like this, we can go back, go down here, choose interapp audio bus output and then choose interapp audio output one, which you can see is group the loop. OK, and then you choose group the loop and you'll see that there's a little record function down there, which means you can start recording here if you're not using an external MIDI keyboard and do anything in here. So first of all, what we will do is open up an audio unit extension and I will use the analog 909. Now, at the moment, right, our tempo is set at 90. We want our tempo to be set at, say, 120 like this and I'm going to go back to group the loop and I'm going to you see it's set at 120 but I'm going to start a new project this is last night's live stream so new session and uh, we'll just leave it at session one 11 create and it will create a new session for us in a minute momentarily like this and the tempo will be at 120 and it will be one bar long okay we're monitoring now, because we've started a new session, we need to set our monitoring up again. So at the moment, you can see it's monitoring my voice because my voice is going into input one. I'm going to go down again to find uh, into, um, uh, what's it called, AUM, select port one again, and now we're monitoring from AUM. I'm going to hit monitor so we can hear the output from AUM. So anything that's playing through AUM, we'll be able to hear it now. 
okay i'm going to set my bar length to two it doesn't really matter you can set it to as much as you like or you can free record now what sam sam was sam uh, sam was saying earlier hi sam you, what you were saying earlier this will de auto detect your your tempo for you if you switch q off you've got instant recording and it doesn't know the tempo so it's going to listen to what you play in but for me that's i can't that would be no good so now i'm going to pop back here make sure my volume is turned down because 909 can be quite loud i'm going to select a pattern here and i'm going to select this one from jason dj puzzle and also because of the levels i'm also going to go to the mix and bass drum down to there and that snare down to there otherwise it just gets too loud now the cool thing is because we're all linked up now we can go back to group the loop and we can start that pattern from here in little count round there you go and if i turn monitor off you'll stop hearing it like i said you're monitoring everything that's coming in now okay we've got a two bar pattern length so anytime we like two three four now it's recording it and it will stop it and you'll hear phasing now can you hear the phasing now that's because we're still monitoring the input switch that off now all you're hearing is the sound from group the loop which means that we can go back to AUM get rid of that because that's not being used anymore open up another one audio new extension let's choose synth master one Let's hook Synthmaster on up to my MIDI keyboard, okay, which is the key step 37. Cool beans. And now we need to monitor again. And there's the there's Synthmaster. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back here, it's easier. Let's go and choose a nicer sound. Browse. I'll use key orbit two. And done and now, even your levels aren't that important now, as long as you're not clipping, of course, because uh, we can control all our levels and everything from inside Group The Loop. We have a complete full bore mixer. We can swipe down to choose effects, the mix, the label, so we can call this 909, export, copy. We can swipe up to get an, a direct access to the actual mixer, so panning and volume. Okay, so now, What's brilliant about Group the Loop Looper, and it's why it's my, one of my favorite loopers is, now I can set a completely independent pattern length for anything else I record. So I'm gonna set four for this one. Now you see I'm counting up four, five, six, I can count up like this. If I go in here and choose multiply, what will happen is it'll then double the bars, eight, 16, so we leave it on four for this second loop. And now I'm gonna record this second loop. And it will track around, you know, like this. Awesome. So now I've got the 909 in there and Synth Master. We can stop monitoring again. Go back to AUM. Take Synth Master out the picture. We could swipe down on this one now, or swipe up. Control the mix. Maybe control the mix better. Let's call this one just, just to show you how to name things. You can just label it like this and we'll call this one uh, 909. Okay. And then we can call this one Synthmaster 1. So we can call it SM1 like that. And now we know kind of what's going on. Now you can also just, can, just overdub on each track as much as you like. So let's do that, shall we? Let's put... I don't know, something else on top of that synth master. But bear in mind, you've still got two other tracks. 
as well. Or if you're happy with the mix, let's let's do what I said I was going to do as a tutorial point. Okay, so now we've got this, and because it's linked to AUM, it will start on AUM's next count round. Let's go to AUM now. Let's switch monitor on. Um, sorry, I'll go with this one. Audio unit. Let's choose, uh, I don't know, the OBXD. Hook that up to the key step. So let's re let's record that. Bearing in mind, we can apply effects if we want to as well. We are monitoring. If we're not, we don't hear it. And let's record it on top of that synth master. Let's just make sure the mix is okay though, say, late. Cool beans. Oops. Over the So we've got two tracks recorded onto this one now. So what we could do if we want to, uh, as another thing you can do with Group The Loop, this iPad is 2018 basic. Um, what we can do is if we hold this loop and we're happy with the mix, bear in mind, we can just drag it up like this and it'll ask us if we want to copy and merge or just merge. Well, we'll just merge like this. And now those three tracks are now part of group group one. And we've got another three tracks left. We can rename the SM1 anytime we want. But now we've got, sorry about that. We're waiting for AUM's transport to uh, run around now. So. Well, you've got four independent tracks per group, but really you've got, can totally unlimited you can overdub as many as much as you want okay so now we've got this what well basically that's it you know you can let's what let's record something else okay but let's use um the hardware synths all we need to do is choose our my keyboards and all going in through uh three and four so now i'm monitoring You don't need a manual sound for this. Now I'm monitoring input three and four from the audio fuse, which is the Modi X. So, so if I just play those same three chords and let's start it off again and it'll let it start off playing. Hit Q. Right, so cool thing is now other groups. Let's add another group in, okay? So you can add, I think it's like, it's an awful lot of groups, some 30 odd or maybe even more than that, but you can keep adding groups by just scrolling along and keep adding a group. Let's swipe down and you can do all this. Right? I can show you this. We can do this while it's playing. So if we listen to while it's playing, things will, there we go. Hit copy. And anywhere that it can be copied will light up with a P. So for instance, you can copy to any of the master group tracks. The master group tracks are the tracks that play all the time. 
They're, they're group independent. So if you had a shaker or a hi-hat, it would just play all the way through your mix, unless you stopped it, of course. Okay, so now, now we've selected paste, right? We can paste this anywhere we like. So I'm gonna paste it there like this, and you'll see it just appears there. So this will play then without the piano. And choosing groups is really easy, right? We can do it like this, or we can just do it like this. So if it, this is handy if you've got a big stack of groups and you want to jump between different types of group. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's play this. Sorry. And then let's engage this anytime we like. So that's how you do that. That's how you build up groups of stuff. Now, here's the thing as well. You can put effects on uh, AUV3 effects from directly within inside Group the Loop. Okay, you're not, you don't have to apply them beforehand. It has some of its own effects as well, but it also has all these cool AUV3 effects. So for instance, let me just wipe my screen because I'm getting a, you can't see it, but I can. For this one here, swipe down and we've got some effects. Now, this piano that we had here, I shall just apply some, uh, well, black hole, do this. It's AUV3 effects and you have three AUV3s. Now, this is obviously dependent on the power of your device. You can apply up to three independent effects per, per track that you've looped, as you can see. So you could do the same for this one. You could go effects, okay? Let's do it with this one. And oops, let me just stop that. I'm gonna swipe down, clear effects, do this, and then I can choose from either the internal effects or um, any of these. So let's choose adverb, okay? Because it's close to the top. Or uh, Alteza, because that'll be nice for just some single kind of piano shot. So now that piano has became interesting is it because it's my i'm not sure why i'm not actually hearing that so let's just see shall we Interesting. Okay. All oh, right. Ah, oh, no, dickhead. Do you know what you've got to do? I'm glad I did that. I could apply Alteza now. I'll show you. Tap this. There's a way to do this because this is the way Joe used to do it. And I, I right, okay. I can apply Alteza now, and Alteza will be applied to that piano recording. Right, the way to do it to record it in is like this. I'm gonna get rid of that, delete. So you can just delete any loop that you record. Hit the little gear icon and go to audio input, right? And then choose the effect, right? So let's go with Alteza again. And I'll stick with the initial, the initial patch. So there it is, it's loaded now. My input has been affected. Now this is dead handy, right? And I'll show you why. This saves tons and tons of CPU. So that Alteza has now been applied to, applied to our piano, which is coming in via three and four of the, the audio fuse and audio interface. And at any time I can increase or decrease the amount of bars that's been used. In fact, I'm gonna in, uh, make that bigger. Choose a different one, maybe. Okay. So now we're good to go recording our piano with the Alteza applied. Now this is good for saving CPU, and I'll show you why. 
in a sec. So we're just going to start this off. Because that's now been baked in, we can go to our settings and just take our tether away. So we've saved all that CPU that our effect might have been using. Okay, so let's go along here. So let's say, oh, okay, I may maybe want to start a different one now. Well, I'll just, I'll keep this one. So I'll go, right, okay, copy. I'll add a group, paste, and I've pasted the 909 in there. And just to keep reiterating, I'll now record another AUV3 into this section here. So we know our tempo is 120. We know it's linked to AUM. If we change our tempo in AUM, it'll change in here and vice versa. What we want to do now is record something else. So we'll record something else that's uh, more rhythmic based. Okay. So, right. Uh, let's go and set this up. So again, I'm going to monitor from um, AUM. Let's we find it there. AUM. And I'm going to monitor from port one because I, it's easy for me to keep just swapping out the instrument. You can have up to eight ports and just choose the port here that's got to be recorded in. And that's quite straightforward, right? Do I have a vocoder? Uh, there's well yeah there's a vocoder on the chaosolator and there's a vocoder on the mode x but i haven't i haven't set them up um let's go back here and this time i'm going to choose noir and this is pretty cool so who's making noir the noir noir and i'm going to go with a big rezo big rezo kick so this should play let's choose another one Okay, so that's cool. We can go back to uh, this now. But what's what is very cool is is because these are all locked together, and because group the loop is so bloody good at starting and stopping itself. You don't. We can just start this off. We'll start it off right. The whole thing. Now you can hear. Let's jump onto this loop. Noir because I'm monitoring it and if I just want to record it That's how you do it. <clears throat> no. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Yeah, you get oh yeah, vocoders and loops. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Dun 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 dun. So um It is, I don't know what you're talking about actually now, unfortunately, I don't know, <laughs> I haven't been following the chat stream. However, however, 
are you beginning to understand how it works a bit better or do you want to see some more we can do another we can kind of set up another session if you like from scratch and then you'll maybe get an idea uh, but uh, like i said you can just continually keep adding loops so you can add loads of loops you can record for like you can continually change the actual length of each and in, each independent loop pair group you can rename a group completely so group two you could call group two i don't know um this not, not earth you could call it verse like this rename and now that group is called verse the same with three um you can import loops as well uh for instance you could import a loop to uh here or you could import a loop into the master tracks now the master tracks work exactly the same way you can apply effects you can you can mute them or whatever uh, as a group uh, but you can also import loops into that or record shakers in and things like that anything you want it works ex the master groups work exactly the same as this the only difference is the master group will still play as each group changes through its different its different things we could we could actually demonstrate this um quite easily i suppose let's go to uh, aum and let's take noir out and maybe put in a uh bs60 oh actually no we'll stick with um what's it audio unit we'll stick with the 909 and we'll trigger something from a pad so like this so and we need to monitor what we're doing so remember always to monitor what's coming in if you want to hear it sort of thing and that is also exactly the same as um is if where you're recording in from uh, hardware as well make sure monitor is on and then you'll be here able to hear what you're doing so if we go back now to here go to here we can we can maybe record that in could turn it up a little bit now what i have found is maybe i should lock it can i link this to my keyboard i'm not sure yeah only because getting back is a bit difficult so so now i'm controlling the clap via the key step so that means I can just go back in to group the loop now. Don't have to worry about jumping back in there because I only get a one bar count. Right, okay, so cool beans, we can check our level. It's fine, we're not clipping. Let's choose this one, this 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 loop here to to, to play along with. And I'm going to set it just for one bar. So the next loop, wherever I am, the next loop will be just one bar long. So. I'm going to ban you, Keaton, if you mention COVID again. <laughs> Don't come here to talk about COVID. Thanks. <clears throat> right. Okay. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to choose the second loop. We're going to start it off anyway. We'll start this one off. And it'll start because of AUM's counting. And we're going to use this one here. And we're done. And then we can still control the volume. So that's how you record your master effect exactly the same but the difference is now whichever group i choose this is going to play so you'll, you'll get an idea of what i mean So 
so that's how you record basically everything you want to into group the loop and and really it's very very easy once you spend 10 minutes with this you're gonna know uh, well it really rashi it really depends on the actual interface you're using and, I, and I, not knowing what that is and stuff like that um you know it's just impossible and that's quite a big question to ask as well i don't know you need to know the usb splitter and all the rest of it unless someone's got an idea um but yeah you, the proper connection gets but you see it's very cool isn't it you can record anything you want into group the loop and it loops perfectly it does rely of course on your timing but but if you're doing it like i showed you at the beginning it doesn't really rely on your timing at all because it will just start and stop at the right place even if there's a pattern playing especially if you're linked with aum so any of your sequences and stuff will just record you know so it it's it's dead easy dead dead easy and this is how i did the session last night the live session just keep adding stuff in and of course any any time you want you can just start a new group right and start something play something completely different if we add like um i don't know like the sledge you could Make sure that you're queued up. Let's see. Uh, with this one, make sure that we've got a, a a bar length that we're happy with. So four, and don't forget also if you only want three, you just go and turn the add the, the the clock multiplier off, and now you can go up in five, six bars, seven bar, anything you like, and you can go down a long way as well. So, but we'll leave it on four for this. And what I will do is engage my metronome and hope I should actually record that I'll engage the drum because the drum's a bit more interesting than the metronome. I will record something in on the sledge on this. So we'll just wait for it to start. So when this comes around now, I can start to record something totally different. One, two, three, four. And that didn't record why. Ah, now you see. Excellent, excellent that that didn't record. And why didn't it record, folks? because we're not monitoring three and four. You can hear it because I'm using the audio fuse as a mixer, so you can hear my voice and stuff. But if I just go to direct monitoring now, my voice will just go like that. Anyway, here's the thing. We want to be monitoring three and four. And now, oops, stop that. And now when we play this, So it's very, very fast. Group the loop is extremely fast to work with. It's extremely stable. It, it just does what it says. Uh, and like I said, you can then apply further effects to this. You can apply effects coming in. You can record your AUV3s. You can record your interrap audios. It's dead easy. Uh, what is the vertical path? This, oh, the uh, this is the mix. So you've got mix from low to high and then pan from left to right. It's just like an XY pad for the mix and the, um, the mix and the panning. Basically, that's all it is. So, yes. So, Brill. Um, so, that, but really, guys, that's it. You know, otherwise, you, you, you're just kind of only limited by what you want to record in. Uh, really, that is genuinely the whole thing. There is not, it's not really difficult. Do you know what I mean? We're having roast, Stephen. Roast. We're having roast. We're having roast. 
I'm very happy that we're having roast as well. So yeah, this is why I love Group the Loop, and I tell you, it's it's re honestly one of the only loopers I can actually get my head round. I know there are a lot of good loopers out there. Funny you should say that. Can your time stretch? Check this bad boy out. Right, so I'm not sure. Pitch it, but you can change the timing. And so it does have a. I'm sure it has a pitch algorithm. It sounded awful because I had it on pitch. Now it's on time stretch, so the actual picture is now correct. Uh, can you use drum machine app or loop as the rhythm like Quantum Loop does? Don't know. I can't wear Quantum Loop. If honest to God, it freaks my brain out. Honest, I'd, I'd try Quantum Loop three or four times, and I can get past one loop, and I'm blown. Uh, you, does can you use a drum machine app or? Or a loop. Oh, yes, yeah, you can do all this. If you watch from the beginning, Damien, this will do everything. I've re all this stuff has been recorded in via AUM as, as direct looping. So, yeah, you can do anything you want. You can, it'll do anything. But no, I honestly, because I like the look of Quanta Loop, you know what I mean? And and they sent me a code ages ago, and I swear to God, I couldn't, I can't get my head, I, my brain won't engage with that app. Uh, my brain won't engage with certain apps, and that, that's one of them. However, I don't do a massive amount of looping, and I love Group the Loop because it's I, it, it, my brain engages with this app. It's so like it engages with Cubase, like it engages with AUM and Synthmaster and all them. You, you know what it's like. That you, some, you can't have everything to be great all the time. But, but, uh, yeah, it is a little bit dark, isn't it? But hey-ho, what can you do? But I do like it for all sides of stuff. So yes, now you can pitch shift uh, uh, without adjusting the uh, pitch. Change the time without adjusting the pitch. More or less. The Titan's pretty cool. So there you go. Hopefully that was it. Uh, I, I, honestly, I hope that, um, uh, yeah, I think you can hook up Bluetooth, Bluetooth MIDI and stuff like that, I guess. Uh, I would, it's, again, it's not something I, I would do because, because it waits for you to, because you're not immediately having to come in. It's easy. It works, you know, like the RC505 and the 202. It's more like that. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's really designed for desktop use, like so you can just hit hit a thing and it'll you can physically see the counting before the recording will start. So like um, if I choose uh, one of these keyboards in there, we're playing this one for instance, um, like like this. It's not a concern for me to do that. I have time and it'll physically show me. Two, three, four. Mute that one. So it's. I think it's easy to see. Uh, did, did this did it help? 
did it, Colin, did you understand it a little bit better now? Does everybody understand the group, the group a little bit better now? If honestly, I if you watch it, uh, can you can you set up a Diddy key to start it looping? Um, and, and I don't know what that means. Oh, MIDI uh, and MIDI key. I don't know. I don't know, Russ. Honestly, I've I, honestly that's not again not something I I would do. I you just to me you just press play, bang it records. Uh, it just works. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a looper. It is an audio looper. Uh, can you use MIDI bindings? I doubt it. I don't know. Um, let's see. Here's what you get in your settings. You've got audio settings, audio settings, MIDI. Let's have a look what you get. Now, you might know there's your clock settings, CPU. There's your count. Oh, you can change the counting. Look. Yeah interesting um it's got sorry it's got loads of options so let's see what you can do shall we see it's got a link as well what clock settings has it got oh lots and lots um midi let's see midi input ports you can have different midi i could use the key step uh, or the audio fuse as an input port um midi bindings you have no active MIDI bindings. Yes, you can do MIDI bindings. There you go. You can use MIDI bindings. Yes, you can. Uh, what else can you do? Key bind. You can do key. Yes, you can. You can control group the loop with key commands. Yes, yes. You have no key commands, but yes, you can. And you could turn them on, and then I don't know how you do that, but yes, you can. Um, so yes, you can. It does everything. <laughs> Uh, five. It's been simple to use. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 uh, the five oh five looks pretty simple to use. I watched a few videos on it. Bluetooth MIDI and advertise. That's with mid for a bit of Bluetooth. So yeah, it covers all the basic stuff. You can have key commands. You you can do Bluetooth MIDI, which means you can set up a Bluetooth foot controller if that's what you wanted to do. I can't. I can't say enough great things about group the loop i think it's i think it's uh i think it's and you you do these things to suit your workflow don't you so a lot of the stuff that you guys would want to use this for wouldn't be what i'd be using it for so i'm only really good at doing what i do with it which is recording keyboards into it and stuff and doing the live sessions and things which is what i'm going to be using it for a lot uh but the rest of it yeah. Oh, you can also as well, like I said, Im you can also import audio loops if you like. Uh, I imported a couple earlier, but it, it, it just works. I, I did it from the files app and it was fine. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Brilliant. I, but I honestly, m my main thing is, I know we had a bit of a false start with a couple of uh, couple of failed starts, but due to the internet, well, just due to the fact that it wouldn't work, but eventually it worked and hopefully it's okay. But honestly, I just really, really hope that I explained it clear enough because there's a lot to get through in, in 40 odd minutes. But I hope I explained it clear enough so that you do understand. The drum metronome, you can choose different drum patterns to suit. So if you were to go back to, like the drummer, there are different kits that you can use. Uh, folk, you've got some blues necessarily changing the sound but the style if you want a, a kind of a drummer instead of a metronome you have do have different metronome types as well like i said if you turn q off it will try and guess the tempo you're playing in so if you're just jamming around on your guitar this would be particularly handy if you had a midi controller for your foot because this does not have a counting it just it will as soon as i hit this it's just it's just recording you know so if you're doing the um the in the the non-cued thing then yeah you would need can you record four tracks at the same time with that mixer and um, no you record in one track at a time yeah you can only i think you can oh no there you go you can record as much many it looks like you can record as many let's go on to a new group uh new group let's see so yeah we're recording 
there's different tracks now and then this will this will again come along and queue up so but yeah i don't you know i, I mean i wouldn't use some what loopers do that in the real world i don't know um but yeah it looks like you can but again that's not something i'd use it for but i hope that this has given you an idea of at least how to get started with it and uh, kind of get some stuff going it's mind-bogglingly good fun what i do like about it also as well as pair group is the fact that i'm i don't have to have this at two bars two bars two but i can have this at one bar this at 16 bars and let's see how many bars it'll actually do so at the moment it's doing four bars so we're already up to 50 <laughs> we're up to 70 this is this is bars per loop now bear in mind if you're going to have something that's super long like this right if you're going to have something like it's just going on and on and on if you're going to have something that's super long like to a hundred odd bars right which is a long time um bearing in mind that it will take that long for your next loop to come around sort of thing when it's playing so it's pretty good for the looper isn't it because i mean the chaosolator will only loop uh up to 16 uh, steps four bars so yeah how how many how many inputs? Don't know. My 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 mine's got uh, eight. My audio fuse has got eight inputs. So that would depend entirely on your uh, audio interface, Stephen. I guess. Yeah. Unless again, you're talking about something completely different. <laughs> Just have to get it to work. I'm I'm probably on the same track here. Uh, I'm completely off the same track. Completely off the off the off the track, and completely off the what you're talking about. No idea. I uh, can't wait to experiment. Oh, yes. Well, well, the beauty is, Colin, you can experiment with hardware and software at the same time, which is even better. It's not a lot of all you're worrying about is your input and you just change your input to suit whatever you've got plugged in. If I need the input, it'd be like the synths. If I go back to the, uh, well, to AUM, it would be whatever's on AUM. Just make sure that if you're not actually hearing anything that you switch your monitor on and then you'll be good to go and you'll hear anything that's going through there as well right guys i'm going to let you go i will give you a few minutes to say ta-da thank you very very much and bless you all for watching uh very cool and uh yeah uh, i hope you genuinely enjoyed that please strike the like if you haven't already or please consider becoming a patron or send in a donation or something help support what me and joe do here at the sound test room and if you're not subscribed subscribe and uh, and if you want to be notified uh, a couple of times a day, hit the bell. <laughs> um, right, brilliant. Um, I, I, I think that went really well in the end. After the start, I didn't think I was going to be able to uh, stream it. You know. Anyway, see you later. I'm sure, we'll be back tomorrow with some some stuff. Ta-da.